Hey everybody and welcome to your awkward, nerdy, floral, Elvis loving makeup artist friend Kat Sketch to bring you a brand new makeup transformation turning into the food king himself, Gordon Ramsay. I cannot tell you how much I love Gordon Ramsay's shows. When he critiques restaurants, this show was like what brought me and my boyfriend together. It was like the first show that we actually loved together and agreed upon how much we liked it. We would even go as far as to look at the modern day reviews after Gordon Ramsay been to the restaurant and rejuvenates, revamps the restaurants. Basically, he had a show where he critiques the restaurant's food quality and the atmosphere and he redoes everything and he's very harsh, but he means to do good things. He's like the strict dad who has a good heart and I just love and adore him, so today I decided to turn into him and we will see if we can do this because since we're in quarantine, I don't have access to prosthetics right now. So if I need a prosthetic, I might have to use my Bin Nine Nose and Scar Wax. So let's just see and get started. And during this video, I'm gonna talk about foods that are tied to memories for me personally because I'm a foodie, I've been getting thick this quarantine and Food has been very close to me and my family. As you guys know, I'm from a Japanese American household and we show each other love and we don't say love, happy for you, proud of you, grateful, uh, we love you in any other way other than feeding you. So <laughs> food's important. So I'm gonna talk about foods that are tied to great memories for me and foods that I can't eat anymore because I'm a gluten-free princess. I'm allergic to rice, wheat, barley, gluten, and a whole laundry list of other things that aren't food. But let's get started and put on a wig cap because Gordon Ramsay does not have this hair. He has a quaffed, messy, middle-aged, cool guy hair. So I'm gonna put a wig cap on. See you. Let's get started by putting this on. Ow, ow, okay. He has tiny lips, man. It's gonna be like, that's the best I could do. We're just gonna have to be a contour queen today. I mean, when am I not a contour queen when I have to turn into someone else? Because I've got a moon face and I need to show that I have chiseled features some way, somehow, and cheekbones higher than the heavens. Because my cheekbones are under all these. I'm not trying to be mean to myself. I'm just being honest. Let's moisturize our face. I'm not gonna put it on my nose because I'm actually might put some nose and scar wax there. Why did I do that? Cause I might be putting some liquid latex down. What do I think of? So first of all, let me talk about Japanese New Year's because it is the one holiday that we absolutely love. We celebrate Japanese New Year's even with more joy than Christmas. Yes ma'am. The reason why I'm deleting my eyebrows is because his eyebrows are very low and very different than mine. So I'm just gonna delete mine and draw on new ones. All right, now I'm gonna stipple on some liquid latex to do some wrinkles. This is gonna be a lot of layers and a very long process. All right, now that we have all the stippling on, my liquid latex is really weird, but we got some wrinkles down. I am going to get my nose and scar wax and you really wanna make sure you this looks gross. Lotion up your hands to be able to make the nose and scar wax pliable and stick to your face and not to your hands. You also need some spirit gum as well. So I'm gonna put some spirit gum on my nose and areas that I'm gonna put some nose and scar wax. And I'm just gonna get with a spatula some of the nose and scar wax with my moistened, moisturized hands and start laying some of the nose. I could easily smooth out this wax onto my nose and talk about oh my gosh the new year's parties my japanese family has there's only like eight to ten people that come but we f have enough food to feed like 20 to 30 people we have sashimi and what's really popular is this seven vegetable uh like salad mixture that has bamboo shoots and different vegetables in it that we're supposed to eat for good luck that my grandma always makes. She also makes Hawaiian musubi because some of our family's Japanese Hawaiian. My grandma makes the best musubi I've ever had, even the ones I've had in Hawaii. Even like my friends that don't like spam love Hawaiian musubi that my grandma makes because she's amazing. We also need to eat this red bean that gives us like good luck for New Year's. 
and we have to eat ozoni soup which is this soy sauce um, based soup with fish stock that has like greens in it and shiitake mushrooms and it's supposed to be the first thing you eat in the new year for breakfast so we can't eat from midnight to that day because we're supposed to eat this ozoni soup it has mochi in it the rice cakes so food is very much tied to my family my grandma also makes this amazing potato salad that's like a deviled egg potato salad and it's super simple and it just has like eggs and mayo and black olives in it I don't know why, my family loves black olives so much. They have rice there. My grandma makes this fried rice that's amazing as well. It has bacon and garlic and onion in it and eggs. Just like foods like that bring so much memories. My mom during the summer, she made this Japanese like cold noodle soup. And it's mostly noodle, soba noodle. Oh, I can't eat that anymore, but I miss it. We're getting places, it's not quite there yet. It's hard doing people's noses because you don't want to make fun of them and overdo their features into a caricature. It's hard turning into people in general. This is so hard to do. All right, now that we have our nose, I'm going to put on some sealer, flexible sealer. What this is gonna do is help lock in that prosthetic we just made and so that I could paint over it without it seeping into the wax. Ooh, it's like syrup, it's not fun to put on. It's messy. You have to be careful. I like to put it just over the edge of it and talk about, oh my gosh, do you guys know what ambrosia salad is from Edward Scissorhands? I already knew what that was even before watching that movie because my mother makes this green ambrosia salad that everybody but me fights over. It has like walnuts and cottage cheese and it looks like something from Dr. Seuss like green eggs and ham but in jello cottage cheese weird salad form. Ugh, I don't know what, that is definitely a white American dish. I don't know why we serve it, but people love it in my family and I can't stand it. But it brings back memory still. I'll take a bite once in a while just to remind myself why I don't like it. <laughs> See if I actually do like it eventually someday. But no, never. I'm so excited to paint this face. All right, so now some foods have great memories and some foods, mm, not so great memories, but at the same time, it's about the people you're surrounded with. So it's kind of a good memory. When me and Shane and my best friend Pam, we were like the three amigos during summers in college and we would eat Nutella. Like, it's almost like we just discovered Nutella. Maybe we felt like Nutella was for like fancy rich people and I never had Nutella until I met them. And we went ham on Nutella one summer and we would take it everywhere with us to Froyo shops. Like it was a security blanket best friend with your best friends. We would even take it to Denny's and we would order, they had like these cinnamon swirl pancakes and all these other pancakes. These were before they had the pancake little hush puppy things at Denny's. And we would put it on pancakes at Denny's. This is before I found out I was gluten sensitive and allergic and we would go ham and put it on pancakes and sundaes and all types of stuff to the point where we got sick but it wasn't just any type of sickness we had this crazy stomach flu virus that all of us got and we all had we were so crazy we had matching pajamas like bottoms like sweatpants that we would all wear during the summer and have sleepovers with and we got so sick. I remember throwing up so much from getting sick from the Nutella pancakes that my stomach muscles were so weak I could barely stand up. But Nutella and Klondike bars too, they remind me of being sick and so it's hard for me to eat. Klondike bars only because that was the last food I ate after the Nutella thing right before I got really sick. Like we were thrown up in front of each other. It was really bad. Oh my gosh, we would be such like obsessed with food people that we even went camping and brought our own food. And we were also obsessed with like cheese dip. We would eat it straight out of the jar, like those cheap cheese dips. And we were so obsessed with sweets that, you know Rice Krispie Treats, how they're made with Rice Krispie, the cereal? Well, me and Shane had this idea 
to make it out of fruity pebbles and it was like the best tasting most beautiful rainbow looking thing ever and he would even like get we got we were obsessed with funfetti cake we even had funfetti well cake flavored chapstick and we made funfetti funnel cake one summer for my birthday it was so much fun another thing that reminds me of great memories is my nana like everything southern and texan ties to her especially brisket she would make the best brisket better than any restaurant oh my gosh she made the best biscuits too i have the recipe it's like one of those recipes that i literally have to take it to my grave do you guys have recipes like that because i have a few that i can't i just have to take it with me to my grave it's just a promise i made to myself and my family <laughs> And she would make the best pies. I remember having tamales with her. In Christmas, she had all these pies. It was so delicious. Oh, she would slow cook that brisket all day. Her whole house would smell like it. My grandpa, her husband, we just called him John Henry. He used to make these, I've made videos about them, but he would make these weird milkshakes, I would call them. And what they basically were was um, buttermilk with white bread, like torn apart and dumped in it. It was so disgusting and weird, but I didn't judge my grandpa. He knew we all thought it was disgusting though. I just don't understand. My Nana would even put peanuts in her Dr. Pepper. I don't know what it is about Texas and people here just love Dr. Pepper. But she was obsessed with Dr. Pepper and she put salted peanuts in it because she said it would enhance the flavor of the Dr. Pepper and I tried it one time and it was absolutely disgusting. Again with Pam and Shane, I remember Pam and a few of our friends, not only her, were obsessed with salty sweet things which was peanut butter sandwiches with sliced dill pickles in it and me and Shane tried it because our friend Pam was so obsessed with it. It was disgusting. It tasted like dirt. We don't understand but there's a lot of people that are obsessed with peanut butter inside of sandwiches and hamburgers and weird stuff like that like a dill pickle peanut butter thing is not actually that odd for some people i mean i don't get it like i said i tried it it was disgusting i'm just trying to set my eyebrows oh my gosh and my dad and my nana would make these beans southern beans with ham hocks in it that would they would slow cook all day and it was the best tasting thing ever. They even used to get the ham hocks and with our beans, we would even put like sweet and spicy mustard in it. I don't know what was up with that, but it was just a thing we did. And cornbread, oh my gosh, cornbread reminds me of my dad and so does biscuits and gravy. Me and my dad make the best biscuits and gravy, no demand. Biscuits, the Southern gravy, that we make is so much better because we make ours with bacon instead of sausage like most people make theirs with sausage but our bacon one i swear to you tastes so much better in my opinion like everyone wants me and my dad's biscuits and gravy recipe it's so good and i found out a gluten-free way that i could eat it and make it i'm just doing all the wrinkles sorry gordon even me and bunny have foods that we that i associate with her because we would eat them so much together Bunny's family makes the best meat sauce spaghetti and I used to hate meat sauce spaghetti and barbecue till I met Bunny and her family because they eat barbecue and this meat sauce spaghetti that is so freaking delicious. Killen's barbecue out here in Houston, Texas is one of the best barbecues I've ever eaten. And I think I used to not like barbecue when I was younger because it was sweet barbecue that didn't taste as good as it wasn't good enough barbecue in California as it is in Texas. Like ours in my house was way too sweet. In my opinion, ours was too sweet compared to the ones out here in Houston, Texas is so good. So now I'm willing to try all different types of barbecue and Bunny's family makes this meat sauce spaghetti like I was saying, it was so good. My mom used to make her meat sauce spaghetti with turkey. I think that was the problem. No offense against people that like ground turkey in their meat sauce, but it's just not my favorite thing. I think that's why I didn't like it as much. I would even like, my mom would make me eat this, her meat sauce spaghetti, and I would be like, no, and she like, you have to eat everything on your plate. So I would stuff it in my drinking cup, even though I was drinking water, like I was hiding it, but like, how are you, you're still gonna see it in a drinking cup with water. Like, what was I trying to prove? 
where my eyebrows used to be, I'm gonna draw like wrinkles. Oh my gosh, and Frito Pie. Bunny loves Frito Pie just as much as I do. Frito Pie and cheap cheese nachos reminds me of her. And we used to eat those things while watching Twilight Zone. And what was that show? It was like something, campfire stories. Like it was, oh, I'll put the name here cause I'll, I'm forgetting blanking on it. But we would watch those and she had this cheap cheese nachos. It was like, it's like that cheap cheese in a can that you used to eat at the movie theaters. We love not chicken nachos, white chicken breast nachos with that. And we have pico on it and guacamole on the side, and it's so delicious. And whenever I have cheap cheese nachos, I will never not think of Bunny. It's just me and hers like tradition. Frito pie, cheap cheese nachos, and spaghetti. Meat sauce spaghetti. It has to be her family's meat sauce spaghetti because all the other ones, I haven't found one better. Oh my gosh, my dad used to take us to this one place that I miss a lot. Because again, there's so many foods that I miss that have like, Memories tied to it that I can't eat anymore. One of them being this place called Philippe's in downtown LA, and they have the same price coffee, I think, since they've op been open for over 100 years. And they have these really simple beef dipped sub sandwiches. They're so good. You know those places that have like peanuts on the ground? That was Philippe's. We would take my Nana there too. She loved Philippe's. I also miss fried chicken. The best fried chicken I've ever eaten was Bojangles in North Carolina. I miss that place so much. They have the best biscuits, well, of the my nanas, with the honey butter on it, and they have such great sweet tea with macaroni and cheese, oh my gosh. Other than the macaroni and cheese that I make from Chef Risa's recipe, she's one of my favorite cooks online, this mac and cheese is pretty stellar and amazing. He looks odd because he doesn't have eyebrows yet, but we're gonna put some eyebrows on now. I promise you, I promise you we will. He's so fit for his age too. I can't make abs. All right, now for eyebrow. I need like a light brown, almost gingery blonde. I might use this from Poise Cosmetics and start doing these brow hairs. The things I miss from being gluten-free because I found out I was allergic to gluten from eating Porto's Bakery so much from catering while I was doing um, internship makeup while I was in school on jobs. We got catered Porto's Bakery so freaking much that I found out that I was definitely allergic, deathly I should say allergic, to gluten, rice, barley, wheat, I was internally bleeding for 10 days while in school, which was not pretty. <laughs> so once you start, that ha starts happening to you, you definitely don't want to eat gluten again. And I have a rare rice allergy being Japanese. It's really sad. And so I miss stuff like banh mi sandwiches. Oh my gosh, that's so good. And pho, I miss pho so much. Banh mi's are like, it's the only way I will eat cucumber, not cucumbers, carrots. I hate carrots other than when it's like an, carrot cake or a bomb me sandwich. I also miss churros, not only at Disneyland, those churros are honestly trash compared to these churros at the stand at Shoreline Village. They have these giant churros that taste like apple pie, like a hybrid of churro and apple pie. And it's so delicious. And I miss pizza in Austin. They have this great pizza place. I forgot what it was called. Okay, I'll put the name if I forget, I definitely forgot. My brother makes a really good, mean, homemade pizza too. I also miss sushi, of course, being Japanese. I miss my grandma's sushi rolls. Not even the sushi you necessarily, I do miss that though. Like the hybrid Americanized sushi that you get at sushi bars, especially the ones with jalapenos, the spicy tuna rolls with jalapenos on top. I miss those. I miss fried mochi ice cream too. Oh my gosh, I miss Thai food, pad see you and um, these fried Thai chicken wings that they don't even make anymore. It used to be at my favorite Thai food restaurant in California, and she moved back to Thailand, so I can't get those anymore. That fried Thai chicken was so good that my friend Pam is allergic to like lemongrass and lemons, and her throat would be closing up and she'd still be eating it. I don't understand her. And her hands would get all puffy, because she's allergic. I'm trying to make his deep set wrinkles even more deep. Oh my gosh, I also missed this place in California that was called Henry Moffitt's. 
my cousin's wife used to work there and they still sell the pies. They're these chicken pot pies with no vegetables and it's just like pure fattening gravy and chicken. They still sell it at the farmer's market in the, the Grove in Hollywood. Porto's, where I found out I was allergic, they make the best cheese rolls and these fried balls of mashed potatoes with meat inside. So good. Oh my gosh, and their guava cheese danishes are so good. This isn't necessary, but I'm just getting some alcohol paints to deepen in and make some more details on his facial features. Like all the little patchiness of wrinkles and hairs here. You even do it in his eyebrow. I also really miss falafels. Does anyone know what that is? It's like a Mediterranean delicious wrap sandwich. And I've made it with gluten-free products, but I can only make it with chickpea flour I've found so far. And when I make it with that, it makes you fart like nobody's business. TMI? I know. I need to put this wig on. Is that the right way? No, it isn't. Now we need some white paint all up in our hair. Not white, let's do cream. There, much better. The cream is better than the white. To color some parts of this wig, cause Gordon Ramsay's got highlights. He looking fly. He's like a cool dad who you want to cater your birthday. All right, now that our hair is done, we're gonna put in some contact lenses to really seal the deal on this leak of Gordon Ramsay. Uh, I really need to build up my contact lens collection. I lost all my contact lenses in my move. I think this is one of my favorite looks I've done so far, in my opinion, even though I have one blue eye in. And a waterline drop, because in the makeup department on sets, they usually give guys a shadow on the bottom lash line. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me turning into Gordon Ramsay. He is one of my absolute favorite binge watching shows to watch. Oh my gosh. Wake up, you stupid idiot. Raw. This was so much fun to do. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about foods I miss eating since I'm gluten free and memories good and crazy that are tied to foods that I love. These contact lenses were from pinkyparadise.com. Make sure to check them out. They're amazing for contact lenses. Now it's time for me to take this off. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be the crazy part. Ready? Ready? <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, my nose could breathe. Subscribe for more videos like this. I do two videos every Monday and Friday, two times a week on this channel. We try to do it all. Beauty makeups, effects videos like this. Leave me a comment down below on what other crazy makeup transformation is there movie characters, other celebrities that you would love to see me turn into. I would love to hear your guys' advice and commentary on what you would love to see on this channel. If I choose your comment, I will more than likely pick your comment to be shout out in a video. Definitely, I'll do that. I should show Corey this and scared him, but he's asleep. Imagine me waking up and scaring Corey like this. A lot of people guys, a lot of people guys, a lot of people ask what it's like being around Corey when I'm dressed as men or other characters. He actually gets really freaked out even if I'm like a hot sexy woman. We have a rule, no matter what I'm turned into, unless it's me, myself, and beauty makeup, uh, he won't even kiss me or barely look at me. It's a rule we have. I can't even flirt with him, can't even kiss him, can't even look at him for too long because it's not me, so he feels very odd about it. He likes me as a person and not like, I guess, for my looks, so that that's nice. Eww. Scrub, scrub, scrub all this off. Anyways, I better take a shower. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much fun again. Love you creators, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.